the negative and the negative cancel, you have 25. Okay, so calculate that, tell me what you get on your calculator. Seventy-five? That's pretty big, is it? You sure? Oh, okay. Well, because of 25 and then 70, that's 75, and then maybe these two cancel each other, yeah. So if we had a voltmeter attached to this coil during that process, the voltmeter would read a mac, uh, an average value of 75 uh, volts. That's pretty good, huh? We, we basically, we made a battery a temporary battery out of uh, just doing that. Now what if you do this? Just imagine this is hooked up to a circuit which has a capacitor. And then you put the magnet in, take it out, put the magnet in, take it out, put the magnet in, take it out. What happens every time? Current goes and the capacitor charge, charges. So this way, you actually create a way of charging, uh, storing energy temporarily, right? Have you seen those little flashlights that you can buy at the hardware store and you go like this, okay? And it stores uh, energy in it, and then you can light the flashlight for a few minutes, okay? And you could put that in your glove compartment in your car, and then if you ever get stuck, you can use that. And so it doesn't need batteries, okay? You, you're not getting energy out of nothing, though. Okay, you're shaking it, right? So that's putting in energy, and uh, it's getting the energy that you're, uh, the energy of motion that you're putting in is converting into electrical energy. So don't think that this is a way that, oh, we've created energy without having to have a battery. Wow, that, that we can defeat the world's energy crisis, you know? No, <laughs> you gotta put in the work to get the electrical energy out, right? Okay, so 75 volts, then in part B, it's asking us, what was it? Find the current induced, right? Uh, well, the current induced in the coil is just the EMF around the coil divided by its resistance, okay? So 75.4 over uh, resistance of 12. That's a lot of current there, ooh. 6.0. So if you had an ammeter here, you would read it. If you put an ammeter here in the circuit, it should read that current, but only when you put it in and out, you know. Um, we could also now answer, let's, let's jump for a second to part uh, D and answer the what is the magnetic field created by this uh, current, okay? Well, since there's gonna be current flowing there, the magnetic field created by a coil, this, now this is a chapter 30 question. What's the magnetic field created by a coil of n turns? You remember we had a lab on that? Actually, the lab that you just turned in right now. Uh, we had a lab on that. What was the equation of the magnetic field created by a coil? Actually, in this case, it's little r, right? Because the big R is the resistance. So the number of turns is uh, 25, mu, uh, mu zero is four pi. The current is uh, 6.28 divided by two, and then the, the, the radius is 0.8. It looks like it's gonna be a pretty small magnetic field.
1.233 times 10 to the negative 4 Teslas. So very small. So the magnetic field created by this induced current is very much smaller than the original magnetic field that created the current. OK? OK, now I'm going to answer the second part of that question. In part B, it asked us what is the current and what is its direction. The direction is usually harder to answer, believe it or not, because you got to use the right hand rule, you got to use you got to use Lenz's law. Situation that created this current in the first place. Well, there was no B field, and all of a sudden you stuck in there a B field going in. Okay, so therefore the B field went from being nothing to being inside. Therefore, the current has to be in such a direction as to create a B field out of the board to fight against the inside, okay? So what kind of current creates a B field out of the board? Uh, Counterclockwise or clockwise? Counterclockwise, exactly. A counterclockwise current creates a B field out of the board and it fights against the change of the original B. So the direction now, let's go back to the direction. Uh, I is 6.28 counters clockwise. OK? Therefore, what is the direction of the B field created by this? Its magnitude we had just found. And its direction is what? Out of the board. OK, well, exactly. out of board. But does it completely cancel? Is it able to completely cancel the original B? No way, not even close. 1.233 times 10 to the minus 4 Teslas, but you're bringing in six, uh, how many Teslas was it? Six Teslas? Yeah, you're bringing in six Teslas and it's fighting against you with something equal to 10 to the minus 4. So it can't completely fight against you, but it tries to. This is the, uh, the kind of the similar uh, theory to in chemistry. Le one of my favorite theories in chemistry is Le Chatelier's principle. I loved it when we did uh, uh, equations using uh, problems using Le Chatelier's principle. And we, it was the principle that if you increase the pressure on one side, then the equation balances itself so that the pressure on the other side has to go up, right? So something like that. I haven't done it for years, but. The basic idea was that whenever you try to do something on one side of the equation of the chemistry equation, something go, happens to the other side to balance it out and fights against what you're doing. So this is kind of the equivalent of that. Um, OK, now let's finish the problem. And then we'll go and uh, practice some more scenarios. Let's go back to part C. Part C asked, what is the electric field that, that's induced by the, um, the change of the magnetic field? So to answer that, remember the original equation is EMF is integral E dotted into DL, which equals negative d phi b dt. First, what we did so far is just this and this. We didn't do this. So to find the electric field, you do the integral of E across the circumference of the uh, coil. And then this part, we already got the answer, negative. Um, and then what was, what was the answer to this part? Well, that was the EMF, right, 75.4. So we don't have to redo this thing. It came out to be positive. And then you do E is 75.4 over 2 pi r. So the only difference now is you just divide the EMF induced by the circumference of the coil. That gives you the electric field. 